Uh, my name is Taylor Mack. <laughs> Um, I'm, the, I'm a resident artist at the Art Center, and I've been interviewing harp artists um, uh, for HowlRound. If you don't know what harp is, I'll give it the spiel again. Harp is a program uh, at the Hear Art Center. Uh, Hear Arts resident artists, or something like that. It stands for who knows. I've only known about it for 25 years and been in it, and have no idea what it stands for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Art Art Artist Resident Program, uh, and uh, what it does is it's uh, they give artists multiple years to work on a piece. Um, uh, there's more to it than that. Um, sometimes they will produce your work. Sometimes they'll co-produce. Sometimes you produce. It's always artist run. So it's what you want to do with your your work and what your your process, uh, what you need for it. Uh, it's it tends to be kind of hybrid work. Um, uh, sometimes there's technology, but not always. Um, and uh, it's, I wouldn't necessarily describe the work as commercial, although some commercial things have popped out of it. Uh, it's really kind of artists um, going after what they want outside of uh, any kind of profit uh, system. And I'm here with two of my favorite artists in New York City, Amina <laughs> Garnica and Shige. And, uh, and uh, uh, I wanted to uh, ask you to introduce yourselves and introduce your project. And then let's talk about it. Sure. Hi, Taylor. Hi, Taylor. Thank you. <laughs> um, thank you all for tuning in today and uh, thank you to here and all around for uh, this platform and this open space. Uh, so I'm Jimena Garnica and uh, I work with um, my partner. I'm Shige Moria. And uh, we are both uh, interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary artists. Uh, choreographers, directors, uh, we just, we made things and we are curious about a lot of the, the labor and the imagining of spaces and things and relationships. Um, and uh, we, we are based in, in Brooklyn in, in our studio, it's a, it's a converted garage called Cave. And um, we also have a company called the Lame Ensemble. Uh, it's a group of national and international dancers and performers and work together throughout the year with us, creating works, but also cultivating practice and physical conditionings of bodies um, to sort of like give uh, space to, to this idea of the in-between or the in-between space, which is something that we uh, try to uh, embrace in our practice often. And, and, and when I met I you in when I met you in 2008, I think were, were, was LeMay part of the had you created it yet? It, was it has it always been um, this uh, from the beginning of your collaboration, the two of you? It's kind of a starting point around that time. Around the time that the ensemble was the the starting point, LeMay has like it, it, it means different things depending. One of the things that it means is our structure, our legal structure, right? Like being a nonprofit and trying uh, to create a structure yeah. to, or resources <laughs> to, to sustain our work. Um, yeah. And then there is the name of the ensemble. And then sometimes she and me, we call ourselves LeMay. So it's, it's, it's a little uh, bit of an identity crisis all the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, is it fair to say that it sprung out the work sprung out of Buto or is that not is that not quite right? It's you, you can it, say that. No, the word is a Japanese <laughs> yes, no, yes, word. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a Japanese I mean, word. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a Japanese word, lemay. It's a Japanese that the means uh the meaning the, the the moment between the light coming out of the darkness, the moment of dawn, uh -huh. that's LeMay, yeah. the moment of dawn. But also it means the change between one era to another era. So yeah. it's that moment of change. So I think uh, when beautiful. she gets think about Buddha or work, that liminal, that moment of in-between is embedded in the word LeMay. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, and the interesting that lightness of the darkness, because I know you guys, and we'll talk about your upcoming piece in a bit, but uh, first, I know you guys, uh, um, 
uh, you treat your lighting almost like uh, like it's part of the music composition or it's a, a scene partner or it's a, and lighting is a major, major aspect of what you do, um, uh, not just architecturally. Um, and could you talk about that a little bit? Because it's, it's very rare for companies to treat um, lighting as a partner more as a, something that they have to, um, they have to hire a designer for, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, and it, it's such an intricate part of what you guys do. I'm sure Chige has a specific thing to talk about it. I, I, what I wanna say is that we, we're, we're looking at how we make assemblage of different mat materials, elements, materialities. So, uh -huh. The body is a material and an entity. Uh -huh. um, so it's uh, elements. So sometimes in our pieces, we have water or we have uh, haze or we have streams or we have light. So light uh -huh. is, uh, is also a material in itself. And the space is another material, you know, anything that we are trying to make an ensemble with. Yeah. And you want to say more about I mean, uh, as, as she said, it's it's one of our elements that, that definitely light and shadow and we you know we we don't specifically say i'm choreographer or i'm designer or i'm you know sculpture the any elements we have we we dig into and then create something. So light, we, I, I don't know how can I say, but we, we, we like to, it's one of the elements we, we like to work with, within, uh, within ourselves. <laughs> well, it's, it's, we're always thinking about light and shadow, not just about the, the, the instruments of light and shadow, but also that relationality with the body and you know when the body is in shadow when the body is in the light and that in betweenness uh, that that creates in the space yeah, so yeah. you know light is um it's not an like expensive thing you know like projectors are a little cheaper now <laughs> so it's a very available it's available material to us we are not working things that are available to us that's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's I think always key. Is very that's available always key downtown <laughs> yeah okay so <laughs> and okay so talk to me about the meal uh is that the piece has it changed are you still working on the meal uh, uh, with the in the program, in the art program? We are still working in the meal. We did a little detour because of COVID and uh -huh. um, we can talk about that, but uh, we, we did yeah, also love, I mean, present I, I saw a video of the piece, your detour, which is like one of the more extraordinary things I've seen on the streets of New York. I mean, it's, it, well, why don't we just talk about that one right now and then we can get to the meal, <laughs> um, sure. get to the hearty meal. Um, oh, so uh, uh, you describe it uh, better for you to describe it than me well the piece that, that you're talking about um called correspondence with the boxes and yeah uh -huh. yeah yeah mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's an installation performance a public installation performance that uh, has these uh different sculptural chambers that are placed in the urban space uh, they are filled with sand, and then there is bodies inside the chambers, and then there is a mechanical um, system that is creating a fluidization of the sand, which what it means is like a quicksand effect, and these bodies are constantly rising to standing, but they are constantly lo losing their foot and then getting buried under the sand, and this uh, sort of action continue and loops throughout again, again, again. again to give this sense of infinitive and um it was it was a piece that actually was created before COVID and we had it yeah. like here in our studio and we wanted to share it for so long but it was it was hard it was not an easy piece to produce and also questions of being and coexistence and interconnectivity weren't so much um in vogue, let's say, like mm -hmm. now these questions are in our face because we're asking right. every day about 
like what's the meaning of this life what it means to be connected what it means to be in isolation uh what is our relationship yeah. with the environment and with nature and yeah. how COVID has you know really heightened all these questions that many people have been uh dealing and working for so long so mm -hmm. so the piece was there and we really wanted there was there's a lot of there, there has been and we know um the, there's so much death and also there is no space to grieve and uh, to celebrate uh, what's happening to, you know, these bodies also mm -hmm. leaving and, and coming back. And, and there is also a lot of birds. There's a lot of babies. We have friends who have babies last year as well. Um, right, right. And, and it was sort of like the piece is here, you know, and, and, and here as always, mm -hmm. Kristen Martin, always curious and always there for the artists, um, say, who has something? Does anybody has a piece I wanted to make? And we're like, we have this, but it's huge. And we really want to make it. And, and she just jumped and said, okay, let's make it happen. And we made it happen yeah. in the middle of the pandemic in Astor Place. And it was, yeah. it was, and, it was and for those who didn't see it or don't know it, it uh, the, the, there's uh, lone figures in these boxes in the public square. And so there's this element of isolation, but also they're wearing these gas masks so they can breathe with all the, um, uh, or some kind of breathing filtration thing on their faces. Uh, so they can breathe with all the sand. So it really, um, it, it brings up everything that we've been feeling. <laughs> I mean, at least I'll speak for myself that I've been feeling uh, during COVID time is this isolation and this weight and uh, and this desire and this desire to breathe and this desire to connect and being in public but being separated and it's haunting and and it's also quite beautiful uh, at the same time and there's different boxes in within the square with these you know of course gorgeous dancers that are inside that are um, going through this experience <laughs> uh, so that's visually kind of what it uh, looks like so you can understand the, the so what you say um, Taylor, like this that the once you pass that that first part then there is the the beauty and the poetry and then and then yeah. there is something else that then appears hopefully um mm. where where there is not a human against nature sense only but where mm -hmm. maybe some things are starting to resolve in the in the capacity of, mm -hmm. of the body to shift and to allow the space for the other matter, the whether it's the light, the sun, to actually have agency. Mm -hmm. And in, in that negotiation, not even negotiation, in that let go of the individual agency, then a new relationality appear. And if if people are patient enough to stay with the work, maybe mm -hmm. that will also start resonating yeah. as well. And because all, all I saw was a video that uh, from a piece, I didn't actually go and see it in person because uh, I wasn't in the city at the time. That um, how uh, how was that how was that navigated in terms of staying with the piece and people walking by in the street and um, was everyone were all the individuals dancers going through their own um, uh, arc of that or were they all doing it all together? Um. There, there you know what I mean? Score. Could you watch one dancer and experience it and then watch another dancer and experience it again? Or or was it all uh, one piece? It is one piece. So it is it is one piece and it is connected. The scoring of each dancer is connected. Um, mm -hmm. Even though we, we are aware that the observer might not see the whole landscape that it must just like uh -huh. make close up. But the connection, the way it's built is as a connection already mm. there. And yeah. it also has potential to shift, you know, the, the, it's, it's, a, it's a live space. Uh, but also the work is also seeing the people seeing the work is also right. another layer That's of the of work that gets a little yeah. lost in the video. But um, yeah, that was yeah, also yeah. fascinating. The, no, oh, I'm sure. I'm so jealous. <laughs> yeah, really hope <laughs> you guys bring it back. We are looking forward to do it in other boroughs. The the our our okay. our our intention mm -hmm. is to bring it to to each borough in the city. So okay, oh, it will be 
Oh Just yeah. Well, them. hopefully somebody, somebody out there, <laughs> get them. It's so good. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> when people just when they see the when they see the sample, they're gonna want to do it. So, uh, and my um, my my kind of question, my slightly obnoxious question, is this is, um, is after uh, I don't know your entire history, but I know most of it has been doors and so when you do a piece like this where you're in the public square uh and it and it's so effective um does it just make you want to make work in the public square now from now on <laughs> and, and not go back into theaters <laughs> I mean, the public square was fun um it's fun yeah. uh, but you know it's the stage works also we have yeah. been doing, I mean, we have a, a, a history of work that has been parallel to our stage work, which is in community gardens. Mm. And uh, oh. we have done a lot of work in community gardens and also even in a cemetery as well. So, mm -hmm. um, so the yeah. outdoor has always been a uh, part of it. Um, we did something at Times Square, more of like a collaboration, but we did a staging for um, um, room full of teeth and Carol and Sean, but so the I've been always fascinated by the outdoors. Um, it's a different space. It's a space that you can know. It's very hard to work with light in the space mm -hmm. of outdoors, um, mm -hmm. and and the indoors has has allowed us the conditions mm -hmm. for the for controlling the light and the gaze of mm -hmm. this. Either here you cannot control the gaze, uh, you lose that control, and that's wonderful. So I, I just I want to keep doing Bob. I love Bob yeah. spaces just for different celebrations <laughs> and ceremonies and, and yeah. moments. Yeah. yeah. And so okay, so and speaking of which, the meal. Like talk to me about the meal. You're making a giant meal, which I love. The meal. Especially especially Should coming we? out of COVID time. <laughs> Or do you want to show the, I, the work sample? I think that I should just show you five minutes of our 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 work so far, and then we talk. Then great. there is a little context for for the yeah, talk. Yeah, sounds great. I think I, sounds great. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna show you. Hold on a second. Okay. Microphone. Microphone. Okay, one second. <laughs> <laughs> it's always <right. laughs> every single one. I mean, we're, we're theater artists. <laughs> Everyone that did a lot out of Zoom. Okay, are we sharing now? Mm hmm.
It's stunning, you guys. Oh, it's so wonderful. I just, so these, uh, yeah. What are you gonna say about it? No, that is um, just to give context that the, there was a, co a compilation of things mm -hmm. that we've been doing since four, four, three, weeks. three years, three different uh -huh. uh, uh, work in progress or- uh, So those were in all the same performance? No, they were different, different years too. But was it shown linearly or just is it just a sample of things, ideas that you're working on? It was linear. So the, the, the first mm -hmm. one that um, was this sort of palette, parade in the, in the light uh, mm -hmm. that at the end tumbles a round table. Um, that, was, that was the first thing we did, that there was no food. It was just this idea of how we create the the place in the which table. we the table. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. Is that? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> but that's that's an after. that's a great example of how the heart program works. Is you could just say, okay, we just want to figure out how to make the table, and we're going to have mm -hmm. a whole workshop just on how we make the table. <laughs> and then, you know, it's be it's beautiful. But okay. It was, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was of course it was like it was a forty minutes mm. of how we make the table, but it was a forty minutes yeah. uh, prelude yeah. to the table. And then for the we don't show there. For the, what happened was that it was a padlock, and the audience brought food, and then they put it on the mm. table, and then we just mm. ate and drink and talk at the end in the theater mm. inside the theater. And that was like the first one. And then and would you um, were were those? It was a little hard to hear. Uh, did you give them prompts um, of things to talk about or were you saying things while they were speaking? Was there audio that was playing uh, that, that was uh, say, asking those questions of, um, do you know where your food oh, comes okay. from or things like that? So that's the second one. That's not the mm. table one. So oh, okay. that, that one belongs to another one we did here at our home studio at CAVE. And um, that one was, totally different. There was no these um, spaces of uh, um, fantastic fantasy or uh, um, 
enchantment in a way. I mean, it was a different kind of enchantment, but uh, uh -huh. it was more of a Kutodian, let's just call it the Kutodian energy. It was more of a Kutodian uh -huh. space. And so we um, focus on food at that time. That, that time was the focus on how we can, one, create the conversation so that what you saw uh, they are talking in a room, we gave five questions. Um, and they were sitting with strangers and they mm -hmm. were talk, they were asked like, have you ever been hungry? Um, mm -hmm. What are- You know um, where is that you are food coming from? What else? Yeah. Um, what are your ethics around food? Um, oh, like, your first memory of the food. Oh, your first like memory of food. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and then the people will have like, I don't know, it was like almost like 30 minutes, just this conversation. And then uh, we made this really act of cutting this papaya together, she and me. And then, 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 then they were brought to another space where they were in silence for a full hour cooking together. And they were cooking uh, arepas because I'm Colombian. <laughs> and that uh -huh. is something that um, <laughs> it, it's not just actually it's pre-Colombian arepas. It's something that, you know, we, it, it has this, 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 this uh, history of, of our, our um, mm. South American land, different um, countries have different kind of arepas. And Chige had mochi. Rice cake. Uh -huh. yeah. It's also special for us. So. Uh, it's, it's and so you gave, the, and you gave the audience instructions on how to make it, or they were just uh, mm. helping the people, whoever was actually cooking? They cooking. were making it. The instructions were, were given by, by gesture. Basically, they were following the, 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 mm -hmm. there were groups and dancers will sort of like make the motions and like pass it to them and hopefully they and will they, understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they did, it was beautiful so for an hour. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> they were great, right. nobody, nobody right. talked, right. they understood it was yeah. about silence that moment. Yeah. Oh, um, and it was oh. like they were dancing, they were, the, the, they were, mm. the cooking was the dance. Yeah. The cooking and then the, and then you take that and I'm assuming you did another workshop where you were like so the movement of um, of uh, pounding the actual food then be, becomes gets taken away from the food and put uh, again on the on the here art center stage I think is that yeah. right yeah. well then then we're thinking about a little more theatric, what I call theatrical, um, and is, is a little bit of more um, the creation of some uh, mythological characters and archetypes, uh -huh. you know, and this idea of- <laughs> I was just, oh, it's the mushroom that you just ate. Oh, she's yeah. gonna, she's, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, it could be like really taking all that out, taking the stories, the um, also the tensions that, that are pres present in the, in this, you know, post-industrial relationship with food that, that we have, especially in the urban, um, in, in, in the urban spaces. So, mm. so we were trying to, to, to figure out the, yeah, to create these, these monsters, you know, what, like, uh, uh, uh um, Peter Schumann from, um, a better prophet called this, the gods, these gods, you know, these, these beings, this, this, and, and, and the last workshop that we did at here was like a week before the theaters closed, like one, it was in March, 2020. And we were able to have that intimate space downstairs and everybody mm. was like this and they would look from one place and then suddenly something else was happening in another place. Mm -hmm. And it was this search for these, these, these beings. And, and that's, that's where we are at this point. Right. And so kind of the obvious question is um, with COVID coming in, how is it changing your uh, ideas about sitting down and having a meal with a lot of other people? Um, is, it, is it a patience game until, until it's safe or is it completely changing the, the understanding of what the, how the work responds to the world? I think we need to figure out ways in which we still can come together. I mean, we still have to mm -hmm. eat. We still yeah. have we still have to cultivate spaces for togetherness and for sharing yeah. time. So yeah. it's and especially soon. I mean, we're going to need healing rituals. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Yeah. I mean, we need them right now, but we're going to need them when we can all gather again. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. I think we are committed to figure out ways in which we can continue to make this um, a, a live experience. Um, and it will require trust uh, mm. and care, lots of care, mm. uh, the way we will. Just like we did at Astor Place, you know, we were quarantining mm -hmm. for four weeks, the whole company living together, testing, yeah. making sure mm. that we were safe so that we can minimize risk. I mean, the risk is always yeah. going to be there until we all vaccinated, right? Uh, and yeah. even though we don't, even, we don't even know yet because we don't know whether the vaccine will fully work or not. So I, yeah. I think you have to find ways of, of togetherness, uh, understanding that that is going to leave some people um, out because there is issues with access, immunocompromised people, people that has uh, less, mm -hmm. um, you know, possibility to take a risk than but others. Are you, but are you planning on doing this um, before people are vaccinated? Or is that, I mean, I mean, well, we want to do another, you know, you want to do the another workshop. Won't happen. Yeah, the, it's yeah, still okay. a workshop. The premiere won't happen this year, but this year we wanted to still do in the summer uh, something uh, uh -huh. that involves food, a beginning. Yeah. How, just yeah. figure out well, how. Like, people are going to restaurants every single day, you know, they sit in their bubbles. <laughs> So, you know, yeah. I, you guys can figure it. Certainly artists can figure it out. <laughs> but I think for now, for us, the, 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 so, so the way that we work, um, probably now you're seeing it too, and you, you're being um, witness and, and other works. It's, uh, there's a lot of work that um, our research is experiential. That's why it fits so well with the HERE model of mm -hmm. giving artists all this time to, to play. And, yeah. and actually, this is already being the piece, right? Like the piece is not that product that we're going to arrive to. The right. piece is, is this journey that we are engaging with. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and it has been a personal one. Like she get, um, <laughs> stopped eating meat, for example, a year oh, yeah. and a half ago. Yeah. Uh, um, we started for when the pandemic started, um, Mr. Hector, who is the father of one of our team members, was kind of was, was kind of trapped here because he couldn't go back to Mexico, and he knew about hydroponics. So we start growing hydroponics and learning how to make, you know, how to have a garden at Cave. Oh wow. Oh, wow. And he ended up performing. And he ended up performing he in does. the piece. He's the one with <laughs> the two coconuts, you know. Like that yeah. setting was real. It was right. like his pandemic corner at Cape yeah. was the hydroponics, the little ceilings <laughs> coming. <laughs> that was his daily life. Um, oh. So it's been like a journey. And now we are in the journey of understanding more um, the issues with food in our city. So we're... Uh, oh. we're um, um, we are um, trying to um, learn from community groups, um, from people who have a long history of uh, growing food, of um, looking at issues of food justice and food sustainability, uh, learning about amazing farm places that exist in the city, community gardens that have amazing mm -hmm. history of uh, building community through, through food and, and, and the education of, of how to share the food and also the tensions that are present in the urban garden and the urban agriculture scene because um, there is a lot of- Could any of it ever be organic in a city? <laughs> <laughs> like, how could you, right, when the chickens might be eating lead, like, like, how can you have organic eggs, you know, in a city, but at the same time, how do you not want to push the city in that direction, you know, not, not give up you on You can, actually, you can have organic you know? things, because there, there are mechanisms that are still to make the soil better for certain things. I think the yeah, issue yeah, is yeah, who yeah. get yeah. access to those organic right. things. And yeah. we all know that who get access, it's it's, it's a privilege. Um, wow. So um, how, when we make a work like this, you know, we can make it 
all about the beauty of the food and all about um, the how we together and that's why we come yeah. together and, and there is no difference of class or privilege here, but it is, there is. So we're also yeah. trying to figure out how we uh, address uh, that or how yeah. the, we cannot address it, but at least how the work is conditioned and, and if there is a space there to amplify work that is yeah. happening on the ground that it's the work of the farmers and the community yeah. organizers yeah how can we do that? well and also the social workers too because um you know y'all would go to the farmer's market in brooklyn one of my favorite things and everyone was there paying with food stamps it was amazing that you could pay with food stamps at the farmer's market oh, i mean of course you should be able to that should, but it's not always true in every place so uh so it's social workers in the in the city that are making stuff happen as well you know the yeah, activists yeah. Yeah. There, there is a lot of um policy that needs to change for for mm. that to to you know like there is a mm. lot of all rules that are, that are sort of like becoming roadblocks for people there is something about designation of um um mutual uh, land trust and some of these places they are not able to sell the product because they don't have certain right. designations or this whole rule about the restaurants right. not being able to give away food and it's better to throw it to the garbage because it's actually there's a law that doesn't let you share yeah. food. Yeah. So how are you how are you having to um, navigate the legal system of New York City in order to serve food <laughs> at a at a at performance? <laughs> No, I mean, yeah. this is, we, this is, we're just starting to grasp that part, you the know, the complication, part of the, yeah. the complications, we, yeah. we enter it in a way we could be, uh, <laughs> like, we know, but yeah. we know, right, like, we enter from where we know our right. materials are playing, and now it's like, okay, we, this, we have no idea, and now we're into this, and let's, yeah. let's learn. And you let's never know, out. you're just like, I've got this idea. Oh, yeah, it's going to be so wonderful. And then you're like, oh, no, <laughs> I have to learn exactly. about every, all five million rules. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yep. But yep. that's part of the, that's, you got, you got to accept that it's fun or get out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's part of the work, right? Like if if I mean yeah, yeah. I I always feel when you're making um art or a, a piece of work that that is all these layers, and the more you um mm. you can listen to that multidimensionality of 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 the materials, of the subjects, of the people that you're working with, the spaces, um, the more enriched you are at the end of the day the more you feel yeah. alive because yeah. you learn something new and maybe you were able to transform a point of view that you had before or that or 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 one that you didn't have you maybe get a point of view because maybe you didn't even have a point of view about something yeah 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 i mean that that is you said it but it is the it's the beautiful thing about having time to make something is that is that the art can be the process and the art it, and that has always been the case for the two of you is that the art is just as much of the process as the performance right i mean uh um i mean the process is the art as much as the performance uh and i and i um well, I, I don't want this to go too long because they tell us that they, people don't watch longer than 30 minutes. But uh, but I want to ask you, um, what do you need from the community? Is there something that the community can offer up to you um, uh, to help collaborate in making this work? Uh, money, time, um, butts and seats, uh, uh, garden walks. <laughs> what do you need in order to, do you need a, um donated chairs do you need what, what what tell us what you need well i mean of course there is always the, the the one is like participation you know when uh, when when we have this work in progress when the piece premiere please come please please show <laughs> up come. you know yeah. please engage yeah. because it's 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 it's, a, it's preparing something an experience for 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 the people we don't know for our friends but also for the people we don't know and those ones just have to like trust and show up uh so that's yeah. that's that's one thing but of course there is the question of resources and and funding 
And um, even though we have here as, 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 as the, the place where the, the producer presenter is, it is really a co-producer and we still have to raise um, funds for that. But also if there are people in the, in outside of the arts that um, are working with these issues of, of food justice, food sustainability, um, figuring out how the arts can be an ally, how, how the arts can, can work cross sectors too, and, and, and what a work like this could amplify, how a work like this can, can also elevate and uplift each other. Um, I think it's important. So if, if, if people have ideas like, oh, my, I, I'm a farmer or like, <laughs> I know this, or uh, we are going to be looking for people who want to, um, who are not, they don't have to be necessarily professional chefs, but we want more collaborators, like, like people who maybe uh -huh. be like, hey, I, I want to help. I love food and I'm up for being in this piece because this piece is going to be, I think it's going to be huge. <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah. How do you make a piece? Be, like, a, I mean, you could, you could make a piece where there's five people and they're sitting down to dinner, and you know, you could make that piece. And in fact, most of the American theater has. But, <laughs> but that's not what this is. You want, you want people. You want a bit. You want an event. <laughs> Like it has to be like a carnival, a ceremony, yeah, a celebration yeah. uh, where there is a poetic beauty to it and, and craft. Yes, there is going to be these uh -huh. this places of, of beauty and craft, but there also should be these places of, of the, the, the Kutolian that becomes the imaginary because something yeah. else happened. So I'm not sure yeah. what the format it's kind of unraveling right now. Um, but, but there's something whenever... quite remarkable about um, uh, the release of performance and engagement with, uh, with the people that are sitting around you. And then, and then again, um, the tension of uh, engaging in performance and then the release and the engagement. There's something quite wonderful about that that dynamic, um, and you, we don't see it enough in in performance. So, uh, yay! <laughs> yeah, I mean, there is something beautiful, right? Because it's like we are always, um, we we are conditioned to experience time and space in certain energetic uh, uh, frequencies. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. suddenly we have the high, the, this other one, the performative one. And now I'm an audience and I'm supposed to be sitting and observer. Um, yeah. and, and then maybe sometimes in certain moments in life, like a wedding or a birthday celebration or a children playing or a tragedy. I mean, right. We, we definitely have it in, in life, in, in rituals, yeah, in, yeah. in weddings. And um, even going to church, you know, has it. Yeah. yeah. So how we make it all part of this life so that maybe maybe we imbued our life what else can we make our custodian life more imbued mm -hmm. in, with magic and yeah. and, and play yeah. i think that's how okay. how can we make that part of our custodian life means we have to like practice and experiment uh -huh. and, and then see if that happens yeah yeah, I mean, wonderful. people are eating alone. I, I can't deal with people eating just, you know, like eating has alone that, is a huge thing. Yeah, I wanted to ask you that. What, how has um, moving to America changed your understanding of people eating? Is that, mm -hmm. is it culturally different in your, uh, in the countries that you were raised in? Or is it, is it, I mean, is it just totally like, yeah, what, uh, talk about that a little bit, how that, how that's affected the piece. <laughs> You can also say, I can say, I can always talk more, Shige, you know that. Um, <laughs> Shige is always, is always the more quiet, introspective one. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, I mean, one thing, you know, the funny thing, uh, Taylor, when we presented this piece at here, when we apply, we couldn't agree which project we apply with. So we sent uh. projects. And we say, I'm so sorry, we're just sending two projects. We don't tell you which one is the one behind what, but right. they're the two projects. And I actually it was Chige's project, you know, that it was a food project. Mine was a different one. Um, and I think our relationship, we're also a couple, if it's not obvious already. Um, and, um, and a lot of our relationship is based in two things, in making our work together and in eating together. 
Oh, and yeah. um, and food has been part of our um, our making uh, roots and our making um, um, life somehow. Yeah, because the food is you know you have to eat every day somehow. You know, so it's it's basic basic things for you. So it means important but in japan is very important like he comes from a family where it's important to eat together and the father uh -huh. cooks whenever they visit they cooks and my family you know we have these things where you have to eat together like what you could be all busy but there is a time when you come and then and you come and, and you share the space together and you eat and and we do that yeah. here with the company you know like we are in work session yeah. and she get say okay everybody food is ready and then everybody yeah. comes to the table mm -hmm. or when we go oh. when we make works we go in retreats at least four times a year where we spend time sleeping and eating and cooking together that's part of our our how like it it's how you build and, and bonds we, yeah and cooking you know we always make the joke that sometimes we were invited to our friends dinner parties here but there was no dinner it was just dips like <laughs> 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 that's totally me i'm like i'm bringing the hummus <laughs> and i even bought it from yes. the store <laughs> yes <laughs> i i was reading this book recently uh, uh about the uh, someone who was in the military you know and she she was uh eating every single day you know with the company all at the same time and then she comes back to uh the u.s uh from being overseas and she um she, she's like everyone's eating all the time they never stop eating <laughs> and it was a little fat phobia you know but it was also she was like i saw a woman waiting in line at a fast food restaurant in the drive through and she was eating before she got to the <laughs> to order the food <laughs> yeah, because you don't like, have time right <laughs> you don't have time but also it's just america makes me so sad sometimes the way that we eat and i and i wonder if COVID is going to change that i mean i definitely know my husband and i we when we were in the city we would always go out to eat <laughs> like, and now we make every single meal you know together so i think it's it's changed our habit a little bit we'll see <laughs> but uh, I, I think there's, so, there's something in that <laughs> I absolutely um, yeah 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 i like i like I just, the ritual i i love rituals I, I i think we don't have enough rituals and i um yeah yeah i love the ritual yeah. uh i like you having know, one day where i take the time to really make a nice meal one day a week you know and the yeah. other the other times are just like okay yeah yeah i, I, I want to do other things <laughs> i'm talking too much <laughs> you talk <laughs> No, 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 it's true. No, 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 because I think what you're saying, it's like, uh, especially for us, like I, I ask, I'm, I'm making an assumption here, like, but we are pretty much city people. I am a city, I, I am a city girl. And, and but there is yeah. something about that tension of, of reclaiming the things. Um, there, there is a certain, we, we have been, our, our rhythm of the relationship with the land has been broken. That's just no, it's just, it, this is real. Like mm -hmm. it has been broken. Mm -hmm. We also, oh, I want a tomato. I want a really nice tomato. And it's in the middle of a snowstorm in February. I still can't get my tomato because I'm in the city. Right. This is something, right. you know, this, this is something <laughs> oh, so that is off. <laughs> it's, yeah, it is something off. Or like in my case, I come from a country with no seasons, uh, you know, we're in the equatorial line. So for me, right. actually, to arrive to that realization of a scarcity of seasons, uh, or and, and then you see, I'm calling it a scarcity, but it's not scarcity. It's just changing, changing the, the 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 product of the land, changing what the land is giving you, and being attuned to that change. Um, mm -hmm. We have lost that, and I think cooking bring like bring us back to understand the material. Like then you're like, oh, okay. If I put the oil, olive oil hotter and then I put my garlic it's better that, or it's worse than if I put the garlic and the olive oil at the same time, you know, like what is, which one works better. And you start learning that these things have agency and that you mm. have to situate yourself not as the dictator of that, but you also, you kind of have to like, 
open a space for for that to tell you what they need, what they want. And cooking yeah. does that, you know, making yeah. hard work does that. Yeah. There's something beautiful. Well, and, it, and it and it and it's so much about the pace of your of your your pacing is different from most uh, art that I see, you know, like um, and including mine, even though mine's durational uh, often, uh, there's kind of like a, okay, we're doing it. We're going to do it. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And you guys, you guys have a, uh, you, I've been in kitchens, I've been a waiter, you know, and I've been in kitchens where everyone's like, <laughs> and then I've been in kitchens too, where they're just like, yes. And now we will put the garlic in when the, when the uh, oil is hot enough. And now we will do this. And now, you know, like, and so it is about pay so much, right? But our kitchen, <laughs> he goes crazy too. I think, oh, does he? I think there's just no one way, Taylor. I think there's, there's just no like the rhythm just, the, it, it calls itself. I was trying to make a really important connection <laughs> between your art and cooking. <laughs> um, but I, I think COVID, I mean, one of the things we're going to do soon, uh, we hope people participate, is a um, story, is recipe storytelling circle that would happen online. Um, oh, and, um, we're going to be looking at different groups of food, like food to go, like uh, snacks, or like food for recovering when you are sick, or mm -hmm. uh, food for homesick when you're like I miss my mom or my house or my dear one um, yeah. or food for celebration and then yeah. we're going to ask people to share the recipe and a story that goes along to the recipe and maybe uh, uh, attention you know there are people who have issues with um, um, with food in a, in, a, in, a, in a no good way. We have very positive relationship with food, but there is issues of, you know, uh, around uh, hungriness, but also around trauma. And, and, and for some people that work food, it's actually a no, no, no. So we want to like open yeah. spaces to hopefully address and listen to those things and then see what those things are sparks um, in the other yeah. side of, of the poetry and the magic. That sounds beautiful. And I'm, I'm going to ask you one more question and then we're going to go. Um, uh, and, and it's about intention. Um, I was talking to Gelsie Bell, who's also a harp artist with you guys. And I said, I said, do you, do you, do you make the work for um, the audience? And I guess what I was really trying to ask was, is your, um, do you have an intention to care for your audience in any way, or do you just expect them to come? and uh, find find their way to what you're doing and i'm just i've kind of been asking that of all the harp artists because i think it's a interesting question to wonder about um outside the the, the realm of commercial theater um and it seems like you you are doing a balancing act of that where you 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 have an intention to care and to try to make the world better and also an intention to um uh uh, make what interests you. <laughs> Is that, uh, that's not quite what I want to say, but can, can you address that at all in any way? <laughs> okay, first of all, yes, we do the things that interest us. There's uh -huh. no point of doing them otherwise. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, it, and sometimes what interests in Chige uh, is different than me, but then why and then somehow you know you find your there, way has to be, there has to be a mutual interest otherwise it just don't work then then, mm -hmm. then if i do that then i want to then i then i do it for hire and you know just you know but i think all the hard work that comes to do our work you gotta do it because you're interested in what you're doing yeah you know? yeah yeah absolutely but, uh, but i guess I think, the real question I, is i think i know is, what you mean yeah I think it's about the out, like how much I am, um, you know, I call this like candy. I call, I have the word candy in the vocabulary with, with, with my dancers, like, or with Chiki. Oh, this feels like we're giving candy. Like we are like telling the audience, like almost like uh, chaperone them, babysit them uh, for something. And, and uh -huh. I am not so interested in that, you know? Yeah. I think yeah. we are, 
we are creating a community when we make the work. We are um, struggling with each with even issues of of uh, accessing what is what what we are trying to uncover uh, dynamics, power dynamics among each other when we work. There is already all these things that we are working on, and then and then this then there is this celebration. This sort of we are celebrating and we are becoming some sort of it's not like emissors. We are more of like an antenna. And then we are just like, um, um, we are the medium in which hopefully something is resonated and, and hopefully you're catching the frequency too. Uh, yeah. but, but we are not going to work for you to catch the frequency. We already worked so hard to actually make the mechanism in which maybe the antenna is catching this thing. So I don't know if I'm, Clear. I was trying to clarify this yesterday at another talk. <laughs> no, I mean, I feel you. I'm like, part of me just is like, I, I'm really envious of artists that just are like, this is what I'm interested in. If the audience comes along, they come along. And if they don't, fine. You know, <laughs> like, I, and I've never, I've never been that queen. I'm always like, I want the audience to I want to, I want to invite them. I'm always like well, trying to invite everybody to the party, you know, and, and there's a, um, uh, I think that there's a balance to be had in that. And um, I just recognize that you guys walk that balance really well. That's, I guess, really all I'm trying to say. Yeah, because <laughs> but I, like, I was uh, curious about how and why. Yeah. Yeah, it's like it's, it's our, there are in a way it's like you're creating you're the, you're hosting something right you you you're you you're hosting a party you're hosting mm -hmm. and something you want the you want the party with people I mean I don't want to make all these arrangements <laughs> and then have nobody zero people up. eating the food nobody show up so right. yes you you want to create the 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 space for care and for welcoming but you also um, you're you also maybe like 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 oh my god are you gonna move that slow for 40 minutes they're gonna be bored that kind of thing i'm like well then yeah but see people think they're gonna be bored but then they watch it for 20 minutes and then they have a breakthrough <laughs> and suddenly yeah. they're like oh it's so profound <laughs> or, so for the or first they might be minutes, bored they might be bored, but I mean, that's what happens sometimes for 20 minutes. People are like, oh my God. And, and then you're like, wait a minute. <laughs> so I'm, I always get afraid of that first 20 minutes, but I think, you know, the older I get, the more I let it go. <laughs> you have to stick with it. You have to stick yeah. with it because, you know, this is what, I mean, there is a level of craftsmanship that we have worked for. You know, I mean, this yeah. is a labor yeah. that we, we have created. Craft. We are creating craft yeah. beyond yeah. magic and all these la la la. It's a craft job, and yeah. and um, you gotta trust it. You got, and then you also adjust. Okay, here I I I, I could I I could have done this. All right, I yeah. tried it, the other one. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, if people want to, you know, eat their McDonald's while in line to eat their McDonald's, like, like there's plenty of things on Netflix that they can watch. Like they come, they come to you guys so that they don't have to eat before they eat. <laughs> so they can wait for twenty minutes. <laughs> there is something about the unknown that that we uh, we always talk about she about these all these kind of different words and some looks very theatrical and some are really minimalistic and some are more visual arts and what is the core what what is it and then what we come to talk a lot was this these um um uh, commitment to what we to create a spaces in which the unknown appears mm -hmm. And, right. and, and that unknown might create certain, um, uh, it, it, it might create, it might be jarring, it might create senses of uncertainty and, and I don't understand because you are dealing with creating, intervening the hierarchy of the senses uh, so that 
people are used to, to understand, to want to uh, process things from the logic. And, and when that logic and that understanding is not being met, there is uncertainty, like right now, like what the fuck is going on? It's not meeting our logic at the beginning. Is it mask, no right. mask, air, no air? Right. The logic right. wasn't meant, so there is uncertainty. And, and in our work, we really want to create the, the protagonist <laughs> has to be the possibility of this uncertainty. And then we can deal how we deal with uncertainty and when we don't mm. know something, then we can yeah. imagine. Yeah, yeah. It's almost like giving the, um, giving the catharsis in the beginning as opposed to, <laughs> like, you know, I hate to put it in Aristotelian terms, but it's almost like being like, okay, we're just gonna, we're gonna, make you uncomfortable the catharsis part in the beginning so that you can learn how to see differently <laughs> right right as opposed to spending the whole time giving everybody what they know and then suddenly at the end at the 11 o'clock number you change it up on them and <gasps> you know like that's how most um uh kind of aristotelian theater works is you're you're hanging out you're getting what you know you're getting what you go it's a certain kind of melodrama you you got it you got it you got it and then there's like a moment where everything happens and everything, something changes and it can never be the same and that moment is usually the only experimental moment right mm -hmm. and and it, it, i think it's a different kind of art that uh is saying no no we're gonna we're going to put you in a new environment, show you a different pace from what you're used to, show you a different imagery, um, have you think about things and feel things in ways that, that are outside of your routine. Um, and so that, so that you can be embraced <laughs> in some ways by the end. Not to say that that's what all the work is about, but, I, but I, it's interesting to me, the, the, re, the reversal of that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. All, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could talk to you guys forever. And when COVID is all over, I want to come over and have a meal and do it. Absolutely. You have to come to this too. I will bring more than hummus, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> promise. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do you want to say so anything much. else? Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Thank you so much, Taylor, and here, and everybody who is um, yeah. listening and, and watching today. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye.